Hey guys, this is Vanessa Dyer, and I'm the Charlotte, North Carolina-based lifestyle blogger behind thecheekybean.com. With several successful years as a business owner, a first-time mom, and a deep passion for health and wellness, I'm here to share my honest, unfiltered advice on all things motherhood, relationships, travel, and more. So grab a coffee and join the conversation. This is the Cheeky Bean Podcast. Happy Wednesday! You guys, is it me or is this month flying by? I cannot believe it is the middle of September already. I feel like I blinked. We went to the mountains. It was Labor Day. And here we are in mid-September. And before we know it, the holidays are going to be here. Anyway, today we're back with part two with Vani Hari of The Food Babe. If you are just tuning in, hear me out. You're going to want to go back and check out last week's episode where we did part one. That one is killing it. It is so full of amazing information around the food industry, processed oils, synthetic food dyes, a bunch of stuff that's in your food that you probably don't even know is in your food additives, and so much more. People are really loving this. I've gotten a lot of feedback that it's one of their favorite episodes ever, including mine. So again, this is part two of that episode. Okay, listen up. You guys know I have a goal of reaching 200 reviews on Apple Podcasts. So in the spirit of giving, after all, we're almost in gift giving season, we are going to do a little giveaway. We are going to give away Vani's latest book. All you have to do to win is rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to the show, and send me a screenshot of your review on Instagram at the Cheeky Bean Podcast. And you got to follow Vani at the Food Babe on Instagram. That said, today we are doing a deep dive into the world of food and kids. Mamas, listen up. If you are a mom to a picky toddler, aka me, or just a picky eater in general, this episode is going to be for you. She talks about how to get your kids to eat veggies. She gives us a healthy grocery list. She talks about how to teach them about food and so much more. It's super valuable. With that, Vani Hari of the Food Babe, part two. Here we go. Um, I want to talk a little bit about oils. I know you've mentioned them earlier in this episode, but what oils are bad for you and what oils are good for you? Because I feel like there's a lot of conflicting information and it's really confusing when you are reading an ingredient list or a label on what oils you should be consuming. Because most of the time it's like sunflower oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. You know, it's not, it's very hard for me to find brands that use avocado oil or olive oil or coconut oil in their products. Um, So what are like the staple no-nos on oils? Okay. So I tend to avoid all soybean, corn, canola, cottonseed oil. Now cottonseed oil was something that was like the main ingredient in Crisco. Um, and also in margarine. And cottonseed oil is, people need to realize how awful this stuff is. It's literally the the byproduct of the textile industry to make cotton. It's not even regulated like food. So the EPA, the EPA has different regulations on textiles than they do food. So you can only imagine the additional chemicals that they're allowed to use in yeah. the production of cotton. And that goes into your body. Um, the way these oils are produced are they're deodorized. They are sent through a really high pressure um, type of situation where they almost become like immediately rancid in your body. They're extracting them with chemicals like hexane, which the FDA does not test to see how much residue is actually left in the oils and how much is in, we're consuming. Hexane is a very carcinogenic compound, so it's something we don't want to have in our bodies. Mm-hmm. Um And there's been studies over studies that show how inflammatory these oils can be to our bodies, how high they are in omega-6, and how they have like very high linoleic acid in them. And that linoleic acid like turns on cancer cells. So that's something that I want to avoid at all costs. Now, if I'm cooking at home, I'll use a variety of good oils and butters, if you will. So I'll use coconut oil to to do really high heat cooking or fry in. I use a refined coconut oil that doesn't have the flavor of coconut, so you you don't taste it at the end of the day. Then I will use like extra virgin coconut oil and like my baking. Um, I use um, extra virgin olive oil all the time to saute lightly or to, you know, roast and because I just like the flavor of it. Um, And then I will use ghee um, to cook things in too. And then I'll use avocado oil as well to do, you know, various recipes into saute. So I use just about, and I try to use a variety of them. So we're not using 
all the time the same thing. I also use a lot of butter. Like I put grass-fed butter on my kids' vegetables all day long. Like after they're steamed, I put them on there. I'm constantly using butter in like my lima bean dish. Like uh, in my new cookbook, Food Babe Family, that comes out in October, there's a lima bean dish that I just love called butter beans that you can find at like a lot of Southern restaurants. And so I just wanted to include it in my cookbook because of how I make it at home. And I just put a ton of butter in it and, yeah. and you know, and boil lima beans and sea salt. And it's so easy, but the kids love them. They're getting the yeah. beans and it's like, it's just, it's a healthy way to get good fats and a vegetable. So yeah, that's basically what I do and what I use. And then, um, and then I treat oils the same way I do flowers. So I know you didn't ask me about flowers, but I think this is so important. Um, when you're making things at home, I think it's so important not to just always use like the standard white flour. I think it's so great to like switch up flowers, especially when you were feeding children because you don't want them to be only accustomed to one type of flower. You right. want them to also have the nutrition of the variety of flowers. So a lot of times I'll use oat flour, or I'll use buckwheat flour, I'll use a 50% mix of the two, or I'll do almond flour in some recipes. And so I'm constantly mixing it up, but I might do white flour sometimes too because my husband's convinced that white flour tastes the best. <laughs> and I don't know if that's necessarily the said truth. Said all men ever. Yeah, said yeah. all men ever, right? Um, he's like, so can I eat these pancakes? Like, what are these pancakes made out of? I'm yes. Like, oh, Lord, oh, just sounds, taste them. Sounds just like my husband. I make <laughs> pancakes that don't have any flour in them. They're literally made out of eggs, bananas, um, vanilla, and there's one other ingredient in there. But he, oh, milk. And he, I mean, he was like, oh, it smells amazing. Are these pancakes? And then when he saw how they look, they, they're they a darker color than a white flour pancake. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, we're having this for breakfast. And he's like, well, what's in this pancake? They're his favorite pancakes. Like oh. they are hands on his favorite <laughs> pancakes, but he wouldn't even initially didn't even want to try it because it didn't look like a white flour pancake. But um, I know we were talking about the differences between husband's and wives. I'm definitely much more health conscious in our marriage than my husband is. But we're making... I made a lot of big strides over the last 10 years with him. So, yeah. yeah that's good. Yeah, I know it's difficult. So, yes. um, yeah, my, my husband has a chip addiction too, but I just buy yeah. better chips now. So, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't have the options in the house, you know, they're going to gravitate to what is yeah. there. Yeah, but there's nothing more annoying than my husband going into the pantry like two minutes before dinner because we we have to keep a lock on our pantry because my little one who's two and a half, like he literally thinks like, it's open season all day <laughs> yeah, long. It can yeah. eat whatever he wants all the time. Yeah. And so like we've had to like, you know, like it's it's kind of sad, but I'm like, you know, my six-year-old knows how to open it. So she she can regulate herself. Like she knows the boundaries of like when it's snack time and what she can get. Right. And she's very independent in that in that respect. But my two-year-old man, he is like, he will eat snacks all day long and then it'll just ruin his meals. And so, you know, it kills me when my husband goes into the pantry and like eats a couple of chips before dinner because like, I mean, the door just creaks open and it's like this, like, it's like someone set a fire alarm to in my <laughs> little two-year-old's yeah. brain and he's just like running over there like, what do you, what's dad eating? What's this? I want one. You yeah. Know, like. Yeah. Oh, I relate to that all too well. Liam's the same way. He will snack all day long and ruin dinner and he, he sees us eating something or here's the pantry. We have a barn door on our pantry. So it slides, which is really loud. And he's the same way. As soon as he hears it sliding, he's zipping around the corner and like, mommy, I want a snack. I want a snack. I'm like, no, we're going to have dinner soon. Um, but I, so that leads me to my next question. I wanted to talk about kids. So I have a, a very picky eater as a toddler and I want to do better for him than I have done for myself. I feel like, you know, over time I've done a lot of research and I know what I should eat and like things to look for now. But in terms of kids, especially when you have a picky eater, can you give me some brands, like some specifics that are food babe approved that are great for like kids' lunches or kids' snacks. I feel like the marketing behind children is definitely, you know, these companies know what they're doing with, you know, a lot of times labels will say it's organic, but then when you, you know, flip it over and actually look at the ingredient list, there's all these inflammatory oils or other things in it. So help us kind of understand what we should be looking for in terms of food for children. So uh, in my new book, Food Babe Family, which is my second cookbook, it's all dedicated to like this lifestyle of we're all going to eat together, we're all going to eat the same foods. And the first full half of the book is before you get to the 100 recipes, and it has pictures of every recipe, but uh, before you get to that, the first full half of the front of the book is all about 
like living this lifestyle in this overprocessed world and finding these brands that have better for you ingredients and finding the snacks. Like I have a list of over a hundred snacks that are better than goldfish in there. Oh, that's as, awesome. As well as everything that I do, like a birthday party or like when we're traveling yeah. and all of that. So like I'm going to tell you some stuff now, but there's like just so much in this book. And the reason why I wrote this book um, was that I just felt like I have feel like I've figured out the food situation sort of with my kids. And so like I just wanted to make sure that I like put all my best ideas in a book so that other moms could learn and like just – you know, just see what we do as a family. And yeah, and it's really from a non-judgmental point of view because we all are in different stages of motherhood and work and all sorts of things that, you know, get in the way of like feeding your children. As long as you're feeding your children, that's great. But yeah. like, you know, it's like um, some days that's just all we can do. But right. um, I just wanted to put everything in kind of a guidebook so that people would have this kind of knowledge and then know what we do as a family. So like, you know, how we um, serve dinner at our our house, how I serve in courses and how I always serve vegetables first before any other dish so that my kids would learn about vegetables. They would eat all the different vegetables. They would know about all the different vegetables. Like one of the most favorite vegetables my kids eat is bok choy. And like they – I couldn't even imagine this being – a mother before to like envision that my kids would like bok choy. Like I would automatically, like if someone gave me a bet, will your kids like bok choy? And they bet me $10 million. I would say, hell no. Right. Like, right. You know, I'm going to win this bet, but no, most adults don't even know what bok choy is. Right. Right. (laughs) Exactly. So, um, and it's because I've just made a concerted effort to introduce them to as many vegetables as possible. And provide at least three vegetables, if not two. I mean, most of the time it's three, but like at least two at every single meal. So they get to choose one Okay, and they also have an option and they, um, and they, um, get variety that, that way too. And I switch up the variety. So, um, in terms of your question though, um, you know, for lunches, what I love to do for my daughter who now is having lunch at school, I basically always roast a vegetable and I'll throw it in her lunchbox. And I just roast it while we're doing breakfast and getting ready in the morning. And if that means like cutting that vegetable up the night before and prepping it and putting it in like a little dish in the fridge to make my life easier in the morning, I'll do that sometimes. But usually it's really fast. I just go chop it up throw a little olive oil on it, sea salt and paprika. And I have a little station in my kitchen with all of those main items we're using all the time. I don't walk back to the pantry and put it back. Like I have to have my little station of things because like I'm always using those ingredients. Right. Um, And then, you know, I roast that 375 for 30 minutes. And that can be anything from cauliflower to, and that dish is actually in Food Babe Family, but um, uh, to broccoli, to Brussels sprouts, whatever, right? And she'll just, she loves a roasted vegetable. Carrots, sweet potatoes, she loves a roasted vegetable. So she'll always have some kind of roasted vegetable in the lunch or a raw vegetable. Like we'll do red peppers with avocado, um, little cubes of avocado. She loves that. Or in like a little chickpea salad. Mm-hmm. Um, I have that recipe in Food Babe Family uh, and, and the dressing I use and all of that. And and then I usually tend to do like a hot item. And so I've gotten really good at sending hot items. And what I do is I take my thermos and I put hot boiling water in it so it kind of preheats it. And so okay. it keeps the food really hot until it's time for lunch. And then I'll make like a big batch of ground turkey pasta like at the beginning of the week so that I have like at least a few lunches covered. And so all I have to do is warm it up in our little mini um, toaster oven and then throw it in that thermos for her and then she's good to go. And I even like – she likes Parmesan cheese, so like I'll shred a lot of it ahead of time at the beginning of the, the of the week. And so I have that ready too for her. And then I usually put in like some kind of fruit or dried fruit too. And, I, and for our dried fruit, I found this company and I, I don't want too many people ordering from it because I, <laughs> I want to be able to order from it and not be sold out. But it's called Frog Hollow Farm. 
And I'm familiar with them. They have the best peaches yes. I have ever tried in my entire life. Yes. We order them at the Cal Reds every every August. Yes. So they dry the Cal Reds. Oh, I didn't know that. And they make them into dried fruit. And they okay. have the plums and the Santa Rosa plums and the pluots and the, all yes. the variety of different apricots and plums. I did and not know peaches. they dried them. Yes. And they are the best dried fruit you will ever put in your body. Like okay. they are so good. And they're all from I an organic that. farm. Yeah. And um, and so we just – I order them by the truck full and I have them stocked to my pantry. And I just take a few of those and throw them in her lunch. And she thinks that's like candy. And she just yeah. is so happy. And it's that's a little such treat a good for her. Tip. And she loves it. So that's kind of like our lunches, what we do. And with the with the pasta, I always do like the lentil pasta. They love the lentil pasta. It's called Tolerant is the brand. Okay. And it's one, one ingredient, like either green lentil or red lentil – or it's made out of chickpeas. And I'll use that pasta. I'll use like an organic pasta sauce that doesn't have added sugar. And then I'll ground turkey and I'll just combine all of that. When my little one was having a little trouble eating vegetables for a while, he was kind of like revolting against them. I took like steamed vegetables and in the blender and blended it with the tomato sauce and okay. made pasta that way. So at least the vegetables Ooh, were in yeah. the pasta sauce um, with the pasta. And I did that for a couple times. And then he he came back to his senses and started eating vegetables <laughs> again. He's It's funny. He's been more challenging than my daughter in that he has been like, no, I don't want this or I don't want that. And, or That's how my child he, is. He'll eat all the vegetables at home. But as soon as we go out to a restaurant and eat those vegetables, he doesn't want them. Okay. Or while we're traveling, he doesn't want them. And, you know, my pediatrician, who I love, like she's just like – my girlfriend, she's amazing. <laughs> she told me, she's like, Bonnie, you were smarter than him. I know you can figure this out. He's flexing. He thinks he's smarter than you. Yeah. And you need to show your boundaries. You need to be like, this is what's being served. You need to eat this. And I did that on the last vacation and he ate it. I couldn't believe it. That's so awesome. it's just a matter of like not giving in to their demands because they can be so demanding yes. at two years old, right? Yes. And so you're the mother, you're in control, you decide what you bring into the family and or your husband, whoever's shopping, right? But you decide and you need to have those firm boundaries. Like what kids need is that boundary of like, hey, this is what we're having for dinner. You can have this. And a yeah. couple times of doing that, they're going to start eating. Yeah. And it's it's hard to do because you definitely feel like you're not feeding your kid. I read um, Dr. Anna Maria Temple's book. She's here local in Charlotte. She's a holistic pediatrician. I love her. Yeah. Yeah. And she – she said, you know, you don't need to offer a roulette of options just because your kid is denying what you're offering. You have to stick to your guns and say, this is what's for dinner. This is what everybody at the table is eating. And if you don't want to eat that, then I guess we're going to bed hungry. And she actually says they will do that until they're hungry enough to eat the meal. And she's like, you're not starving your kid. I promise you're not starving your kid. But as a mom, you do feel like you're starving your kid. So once you can kind of get past that, like, okay, he will eat when he's hungry enough which is a hard thing to do, I do think you can kind of move the needle there with like getting them to try new things and eat healthier and whatnot. But just I'm, that just the mere fact of you not getting up to go to the kitchen to get their, you know, six staples that they like. Right. You know, just sitting down and enjoying your meal and just saying, this is what we're having for dinner. Even after about 10 minutes, they're like, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know it's so true. How do you manage? I know you have um, one in school, correct? Yep. So how do you manage situations where like my, my child's school, if it's a kid's birthday in the class, like the, you know, the mom will bring in cupcakes or cake or something to celebrate. Or I know a lot of preschools and daycares actually provide snacks and meals. So how do you kind of, um, stick to, you know, what your beliefs are around food in an environment where you are not a hundred percent in control? At the end of the school year um, in June, my daughter's uh, class sent out a note and they're like, we're having ice cream day. And I responded in like two nanoseconds. And I was just <laughs> like, oh, I'll happily provide whatever you guys need for ice cream day. I'm like, I was like already thinking about the organic brands I was going to bring and like everything. And uh, the headmaster wrote back in like another second and said, oh, no, we've got it covered. And I was like, oh, should I push this like and ask what it is? Like, I don't know what's going to go on at this ice cream day. Like, what are they bringing in? 
So I was like, oh, Bonnie, just lay off. Like these are all the thoughts going in my brain. You know, fast forward to ice cream day. It's the day I'm dropping Harley off at school. And every day our headmaster, you know, greets us at the door and she's, she says, you know, like it's ice cream day. And I'm like, oh, so what do you guys have planned today? And she says, oh, we're having an ice cream truck come. And I'm like, oh, ice cream truck. Oh, all <laughs> sorts of nasty things yep. in that ice cream truck. And so I was like, oh, I wonder how it's going to go. Gosh, I wish I had time today to go like peek and see what happens. But yeah. I was like, I didn't. So um, Harley comes home from school and she's so excited. She comes over to me and she says, mom, you would be so, you would be so proud. Or she says not something like that, but she said something along the lines of like, you can't, you can't believe what I did and what I what I chose for for ice cream day. And I'm like, oh, what did you get? She goes, well, first of all, a big ice cream truck came and I got the ice cream sandwich and it was double the size of the ones that we have. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? And because I get like the mini organic ones from like Alden's or whatever. And I was like, oh, so it was like this big. And she's like, yeah, it was that big. And I was like, oh, and she goes, you know, I think I chose the best one because all the other choices were like super bright colored. And I was like, oh, that's great, Harley. I'm so Aww. glad that you, you know, thought about that. That's, that's amazing that you, you used your critical thinking to try right. to choose the best option. Yeah. I was like, well, did you enjoy it? She's like, oh, it was the best thing ever. It was so good. Aww. And so I've been teaching her since she was 10 months old about ingredients in food. Like anytime we would come across some type of food that I wouldn't buy, I would teach her about it. So like at 10 months old, she was on the ground at the airport playing with all of the candy, you know, candy wrappers um, that were crinkly off the like Snickers and the M&Ms and the Skittles and all of that on the floor. And I just remember like planting these seeds in her brain. Like kids are so malleable until they're age seven of like, you can really like shape who they are. And so like we had this tremendous responsibility more than our parents ever had in terms of teaching our kids the truth about food. So I wanted her to know the truth about artificial food dyes. And so she thought she made such a great choice. Well, being the mom that I am and the researcher I am, I'm like, what What was really in that ice cream sandwich? Let me just go Google what's in a regular, like, good humor ice cream sandwich. I was horrified. Yeah. Lots there's actually gums, artificial coloring. There's artificial colorings yes. in those ice cream sandwiches. Like, to make the outer chocolate layer, they're not using chocolate. They're using caramel coloring level four. And then the inside had titanium dioxide, uh, a coloring that um, is banned in Europe now. Like I was just so mad about yeah. this, right? And I'm just like, of course, didn't have the heart to tell her. But if it comes up again and we're like in that situation and we're choosing something, I'll teach her about it. But like I was just, you know, it didn't matter that those ingredients were in there. It just made me so happy to know that she was thinking about right. it. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's really huge, all we can ask, right? Yeah, it's a huge like, We win. can't expect our kids to say, no, I'm not going to get ice cream, right? Right. We can't. I mean, come on, right? But we can try to plan ahead and maybe offer to bring better ice cream, or we can um, teach our kids how to make better choices. Sure. And that's it. I also, I want to talk to you about this. I You just mentioned that the titanium dioxide was banned in Europe. So I am, I'm actually from Holland. I lived there until I was eight years old. My dad's Dutch, my mom's American. And I have always noticed his, my dad's whole side of the family is still in Holland. I've always noticed such a big difference in the ingredients and how I feel, not just in Holland, but when we travel all over Europe, I can eat so many things there that I can't eat at home because I know they upset my stomach. But when I eat them in Europe, I feel totally fine. And I've seen you post a lot about like McDonald's, what a hamburger in the US has in terms of the ingredients at McDonald's versus a hamburger in France. And the ingredient list is vastly different. So can you explain why that is? Like, what is the reasoning behind these stricter laws and these companies that know how to make these recipes, obviously, if they're doing it in other countries with less ingredients versus what's in our food here in the U.S.? One of the problems is that largely the people who are being elected um, to run our country are being influenced by these food companies that are making, you know, billions of dollars on selling us chemicals, Right they're shaping the regulations or the lack of regulate, regulation rather um, of what we have in, in our food system here. Whereas Europe has a different way of regulation. They want you to prove something is safe before they allow it in their food. And if they find any kind of harm, they're willing to take it out. And so 
immediately you'll find like for example Italy just banned like glyphosate you know I saw and that. you know I mean from any of their their um, farmland I mean we have a situation where you know all artificial dyes are essentially banned in in Europe because they have that warning label. And then you have all kinds of different uh, chemicals that aren't allowed for use. Uh, the same goes for cosmetics too. So it's just the way the regulations are and the way the food companies are in the pockets of the lobbyists and the people who are running our country. So it's sad. It is sad. It's definitely all around money and greed really, yes. you know, when yeah. you think about it. But I also saw, I think Italy just banned um, laboratory grown meats, if that I'm too. not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. I just saw an article about that, which is really interesting. I'd love to see somebody in office who kind of had a similar position to you that could kind of lobby against some of these things. Because I think long-term we have such a healthcare crisis in the U.S. with all these diseases because we are consuming so many things that are terrible for your body. Mm -hmm. That said, I also want to ask you, where where do you, what does the Food Babe approved grocery list look like? Where do you shop for groceries and what is, uh, like, what are the staple items on your weekly grocery list? So I love going to South End Market, like the farmer's market there. I love yep. getting stuff, but I can't get everything there. So um, I go to Whole Foods. I go to Earth Fair. I go to Sprouts. Yep. <laughs> I go to Berry Brook Farm. I have like my little route. I go to Trader Joe's. I get like a little bit of everything from everywhere. So I don't go there every week you know, to all of those, but yeah. uh, I'm going grocery shopping at least two times a week. I'm going to Harris Teeter. You know, I'm going to Publix. I mean, I'm, I'm literally hitting them all. Yeah. Um, thankful at Costco. I'm not even a Costco member, but because they they can deliver through Instacart. I'm like, yes. oh, I need certain things from I there. Know. Um, there's not one particular that I'd use more than the other. I mean, I would say maybe Whole Foods the most just because they have the majority of brands that I like. But again, like usually I'm I'm overstocking on the the pantry staples and then I'm just kind of going to the fruit and veggie aisle to like stock up during the week. Okay. Because I go through those really fast. What are you getting from the farmer's market? Like eggs, meats, vegetables? Um, yeah. So I love the greens from the farmer's market. I love the squash, like patty pan squash. Like the the heirloom varieties of vegetables that you don't see at the grocery store, I love to buy those. Okay. And then, you know, I will do eggs. I will do meats. I love the fish market. We try to eat salmon at least one time a week, maybe two. And then I'll get like a whole red snapper from um, Whole Foods and I'll eat that or I'll go to Clean Catch. They started making their poke bowls again, which I love. Ooh, um, I love poke bowls. Oh, yeah. They're so good. Wednesday through Friday only. Oh, okay. Um, good to found know. Found out that the good hard way. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've just been trying to eat like I would say like fish – two to three times a week and then or some kind of seafood and then the other times we do ground turkey we'll do chicken um i don't eat any red meat so my husband will cook that if we eat it and he'll you know the kids eat it and yeah that's about it okay so what's worth buying organic and not organic i have seen a lot of information especially around eggs and like the labeling with it being like pasture raised organic non-gmo free range. And there's so many different things on the labels. I feel like, you know, you read it and you think that you're doing good for yourself by picking that option. But then I've come to find out that pasture raised really means they were only let out on the pasture for X amount of time a day. And they really are still eating feed and not fully off the, you know, the grounds. Yeah. So what would you say is worth buying organic? Are you buying everything organic or are there things that are okay to buy just Say somebody's, you know, from a cost standpoint, they can't afford to buy everything organic. What would you say to that? So one of the things I just want to tell people, like, that's so important about buying organic is that immediately you are eliminating hundreds of chemicals from your diet when you buy organic because there's a list of prohibited ingredients. Actually, I have that whole list on foodbabe.com that you can go look at, but it's a whole list of prohibited ingredients that are allowed in organic food. So you're not going to get artificial flavors. You're not going to get artificial colors. You're not going to get some of these additives we talked about today. Um, you're not going to get a lot of the different preservatives, um, the monodiglycerides, all that kind of stuff. You're not going to get any of those chemicals that 
you may not even know how to pronounce. You're not going to get those in organic food. And you're not going to get glyphosate unless it's been contaminated, right? I mean, there's always like contamination in the food supply, but you're going to get the least amount of glyphosate in your food, which is the main ingredient in Roundup that's sprayed on the majority of food in our country. Um, it's sprayed on everything too. It's not just sprayed on corn and canola and soy. It's sprayed on wheat. It's sprayed on almonds. It's sprayed on a lot of different things. So okay. it's really important to avoid as much glyphosate in your diet because it's been linked to cancer and it's causing a lot of cancer and it also creates tiny holes in your gut too that leads to uh, inflammation and, and uh, autoimmune disorders and things like that. So you're going to avoid that laundry list of chemicals that are prohibited. You're going to avoid glyphosate. You're going to avoid GMOs automatically if you buy organic. You're also going to avoid any kind of slu sewage sludge um, you're going to avoid hormones and other weird chemicals that they feed to animals like ractopamine. Ractopamine is a chemical that's fed to pigs. Um, it's actually banned in other countries, but we use it here. Um, and it, it actually says on the label, do not feed to humans, like don't feed to adults and humans, and we're oh feeding gosh. it to pigs and we're eating it. So it's just insane that um, we're doing that to our food. Um so when you buy organic, you're going to avoid all of that. So that's why I say to buy organic as much as possible, not mm -hmm. to mention all of the pesticides and chemicals that are used in farming. Now, if you have to make a choice of what you're going to buy organic and what you're not going to buy organic, you need to stick to buying as much organic dairy as possible, organic eggs, and if they're pasture raised organic eggs, the best, right? Okay. Have both the labels. And then organic meats, if possible. And then I would go and slowly move into the organic fruits and vegetables. Um, organic potatoes, I think, are really important. Uh, a non-organic potato has a lot of different pesticides in it. Okay. Um, there are some fruits and vegetables that have a thick skin, and so the chemicals don't penetrate the flesh of the food as much. Like I'm thinking about avocados. That would be a situation where you may not want to buy organic all the time if you have to make a choice. Okay. Although I feel like a bag of organic avocados is sometimes cheaper than regular avocados. <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's sometimes it's the case. Things that you're having all the time every day, your coffee, I think it's important. If you're having that every single point. morning, have it organic. Yeah. So if you can make those decisions. Also, to save money on organic. So one of the things I did when I quit my job, I was so terrified of not being able to afford organic food because I suddenly didn't have a paycheck. Um, and so the first thing I did was t teach myself how to eat organically on a budget. And there's just so many amazing ways to do that. Using the bins, the open air bins to like get as many, like to get, you know, just enough almonds you need or just enough walnuts you need so that you're not getting a big container of them and they go bad and then you end up trashing them. That's like, a great point. The same with beans. Like beans are so super cheap. Organic beans are so cheap and you can make a huge batch of them and they're yeah. so healthy and so good. And I'm not one of these proponents that are like, you know, you need to eat all meat or you need to go vegan. Like it's not even about that. In my opinion, like once you start to eliminate processed foods, you're going to automatically feel better. And no matter what diet you choose, you're going to feel really great because you're eating whole foods. And right. that's where both camps, when they say they've felt better and they think they're right about the way they eat, comes into play is that they've both eliminated processed foods. Good to know. Yeah. When does your next book come out? October 17th. Okay. And I'm so excited because my little babies are in it. Aww. And it's a really intimate look into my family life okay. and what we do um, on a daily basis, how we eat dinner, how we, you know, all the different challenges I've had with, you know, dominoes being served at my daughter's school, things like <laughs> that, and like what I did about it. Yeah. And I just can't wait for it to come out because it's, it's just a really big piece of my family from me to everyone else. So it's just cool. Where can everybody find it? Is it on Amazon, on foodbabe.com? It's everywhere books are sold. So okay. you can get it anywhere. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to check it out for yeah. sure. What's a book, a podcast, or a resource that you would give to the audience? I love, I'm obsessed with Becky, Dr. Becky from Good Inside. I think she's just okay. amazing. And she has all of these amazing resources on how to make your mom life just much easier and how to dealing with the temperaments of your kids. And it's yeah. just, it's really cool. So okay, I really awesome. love her and she has a great podcast and a book. I loved, 
I devoured her book. It was awesome. And uh, where can everyone find you on social media? The Food Babe. You can find me on Instagram. That's probably where I spend the most time. So okay. come over there on social media and foodbabe.com, my website. So and join, join our newsletter. Well, Fani, thank you. This was such a great conversation. I'm sure everybody's going to love it. I really appreciate you coming and sharing all your knowledge with us. Well, I'm just so happy to meet you and I'm so glad you're in Charlotte. I know. So. <laughs> <laughs>